Hi. What up? This podcast is... Oh, there we go. <laughs> I can hear it now. You did it. Hey. Yeah, it's there. Welcome to the Ironcast. Mm-hmm. This podcast is sponsored by Gnarly Nutrition. You can use the code BLACKIRON at gonarly.com. Get yourself some vegan protein, some not vegan protein. Mm-hmm. Some BCAAs. <laughs> some electrolytes. Yes. This Ooh, it, I just got that slim stuff too. Did you get the slim? Yeah. Gnarly makes a slim protein. Less calories. Mm-hmm. And this podcast is also sponsored by K-Man Coffee. You can use the Go Black Iron at kmancoffee.com. Get yourself some nitro cold brew. Some beans. Beans. Your choice. And I wish this podcast was sponsored by Bragg's. Apple cider, <laughs> apple cider vinegar because I love it. Chloe's been on this apple cider vinegar in water kick three times a day. Just um, probiotic. Mm, helps his shit. Mm-hmm. Does it? Yeah. yeah. Makes a little poop come. I mean, it's Actually, the same thing as uh, kombucha, basically. Oh, kombucha mm-hmm. makes you poop. It's good. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I mean. It's, it's a probiotic. That's the same thing. Mm. We should trade a home brewer on kombucha. Mm-hmm. It, it's just basically making vinegar out of tea, is what really? that is. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. I mean, and the, the apple cider vinegar has the mother in it, too, mm-hmm. so it's similar, right? So, feasibly, you could take that and put it in some tea, and eventually you'd have kombucha. We should just podcast about digestive health instead. Mm. I actually have a lot to say about that, but not today. Yeah, we do have a lot to talk about. Um, this podcast is going to be about money and finances and stuff like that and fixing your credit. Ah, Uh, yes. (laughs) I think all of us have gone through, well, I know Ryface and I have dealt with crippling student loan debt. Um, Chloe has really good credit, but it wasn't always like that, right? No. Mm -mm. And I, I mean, our generation is credit, credit, credit. Yeah. Credit, credit. So basically, I I just basically shared a little bit of my story with finances on Twitter the other day and people got really pumped on everything I was saying so I figured we'd podcast about it. Um, basically what happened with me, I have, I I mean my credit's still considered meh but basically I've spent like what the last year fixing my credit would you mm-hmm, say? Mm-hmm. Yeah Chloe's been around for that. So when I got out of college my credit was in the 400s. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't know how like, you registered that level. But. I basically got out of school. When I was done with school I had all these student loans and I didn't have any money um, and I just let them go into default for a year and then they took away the grace period and then they went into default for a year. So my credit was like, I think it was like 420 when we moved to New York, Ryan. How we got approved for that place we lived in, I don't even know. My credit was so bad. And basically, uh, my student loans were so falling far in default. And what happened with me with my student loans, I hadn't made a payment for, I think it went on for two years, I didn't make a payment. And then basically, we started writing all those ebooks and stuff like that. And then I just took everything I had in savings and I contacted the federal loan department. And I said, this is what I have. This is what I owe. I'll give you all of this right now, if we call it even. And I think after two years, they assumed I was never going to pay my loans. So they accepted it and took it. And then what happened on Twitter today is I had a lot of people reaching out to me about it. If you've been paying your student loans, to my knowledge, um, you're not going to get a deal. You have to actually let them go into default. Which Which I wouldn't suggest. Right, which I wouldn't (laughs) suggest. So, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. You can either have your credit get fucked a little bit, but you don't have to, you know, you could catch a break on your student loans. Or you could go the other way and I mean pay them all off entirely. So again, that's going to be up to everybody as an individual. Um, it depends on who, I'm who, to finish. who Sorry. it's through. Also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that a lot of creditors. So the way it works, but I didn't know this. I had a, a period where I had to pay off some stuff as well. Um, is that once it goes into collections, it's no longer the debt of those people. It's whoever the collection is. They, right? they buy it for a discounted amount and try and collect it from you. So when you offer them a settle- settlement amount, it's usually more than they paid for that right. debt. And that's kind of what I told people the other day is when you're dealing with a, like you, to, in order to like get these deals, you need to be in collections. Because even with my medical debt and all that type of stuff that was all in collections after I got in a motorcycle accident, luckily I ended up suing for malpractice from the mm-hmm. hospital and like I lucked out and didn't have to pay any of that eventually. 
but leading up to that point in time, going into collections, that's when I was able to like make the deal. So if you're in collections to something, you're more likely to get that deal. There is a way out. Yes, there's a way out. <laughs> but again, like that, you know, the reason I was given these deals with my issue with, with all my credit stuff was because I wasn't making payments. Right. Um, um, but anyways, anyways so my, my credit, credit got down, down to low, low, low. I think, I think it's, it's like 420 four something. Um, and that was because of my student loans. I don't think I checked my credit once the entire time I was in New York City because I didn't even want to know. Denial. Yeah, and I was I was humiliated. I mean, because it, it got to the point where like I was making a lot of money, you know, when we started selling all the ebooks and the books and everything like that and everything we were doing in New York. You know, we started making money and we had all that money coming in. So I didn't need credit for anything. And when I decided to finally fix my credit a year ago, that's one thing which she told me was people who make a lot of money don't exactly need, need credit, so they don't work on it as much, opposed to somebody who makes very, like, a lot of people who don't make a lot of money have really good credit. Um, so yeah, I didn't really check my credit at all, and then um, when it came time to buy a vehicle all by myself, like a big girl, for the first time, like two and a half years ago, my credit again was really bad, and I had to put half down in order to get my car, which, you know, sucks, you have to take all that money out of savings, and then when I just bought my newest car most recently, that was the first time I had like actually seen how bad my credit was again. <laughs> and it was just one of those things where I finally like enough was enough, so I went to a local credit union and I had her print out everything, like every single thing on my credit, and I looked through all of it, and then I just started making phone calls, and all of it was in collections at that point in time, and I started making phone calls and I called every single person on the list. I just got all of my debt paid off at once, and my credit went up like 75 points in a couple months, and it finally brought me up in the 600s. So even though like that was a hard hit, it's crazy how like quickly I noticed it before. Yeah. But I'm going back. I mean, do you want to talk about what, like how bad? How, how did your credit get bad in the first place? And how bad was it? Um, I mean, like 20 years ago, it was bad just because I had like hospital bills from OD and like stuff like that. <laughs> the good old days. That I just never paid. Right. And it just, I was like, whatever. And then, yeah. um, do you think that's an age thing? Uh, and like a mental state thing. I also come from a family that I am the youngest. And like a huge surprise by like 15 years. Yeah. So my dad really didn't enforce me paying for my own things. Right. <clears throat> until it was much later in life. So I had a really bad habit of working and providing for myself, but not actually providing for myself. <laughs> and just spending all that money on like drugs and such. Yeah. And then, sort of. Yeah, okay. It was just <laughs> some things happened. Shitty credit. Got out of that. And then that was probably my mid twenties when I got out of it. But then mm -hmm. I just had no credit because I didn't use anything. Mm -hmm. And then I bought a car, and then that skyrocketed my credit after about I don't know, I would say like nine months to a year. Mm -hmm. Takes time, man. Yeah, about of, that long. Of making those payments, and then I got caught in that our generational oh. You just approved me for a ten thousand dollar credit card. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then I had a few of those. And <laughs> I had a couple of those, and then I also quit my well-paying job and decided to coach. So then, all of those credit cards maxed out. I mean, almost not all of them, but pretty high. Yeah. So then. I didn't have any late payments or anything, but with three credit cards that all had high balances, it's a negative reflection on your credit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now those are almost all down. My credit's pretty good. And how long I, did it take you to pay all those down, though? A while. Like 10 years a while? <laughs> Seriously. No, no I mean, okay. I had some money, and I decided to use the chunks of money to pay them down. But I'm going to say I'm in three years of paying them down. Okay. And they're almost, they're almost down um, to zeros, ish. Yeah. I don't know, but um, that helps a lot. And just reminding myself not to use them, like when I go to yeah. places. Yeah. I don't and even have a fucking credit card. Buy something. Um, 
But then it's like, I actually talk to someone, like I have like an investment planner and then like yeah. the loan officer and stuff. And they explain things to me that I didn't know. Like if you don't have a yearly or an annual fee for the credit card, then you should keep it open and not close it because closing a card looks worse on your credit than just keeping it open and not using it. Yeah. And then, or just trying to at least use it a couple times a year so there's activity on it. Yeah. So it was like stuff like that that I had no idea because there was one point I was just ready to like close the accounts, get rid of them, close them and pay them off. Yeah. And I think that's another thing I didn't know about either because I <laughs> like you probably when I was like 19 or so because my dad got me my first credit card when I was like middle school, literally like emergencies only. He told me that there was like, you know, he wasn't going to pay it down. So but my parents never taught me. <laughs> Like, how to be good with money or finances. Like, my dad was incredibly irresponsible. Still is. Was, like, buying cars and just buying stupid shit. Like, that's ultimately why him and my mom got divorced. Mm -hmm. Just super irresponsible with money. So that's who I learned. Right. I mean, and if you've listened to this podcast, you've listened to my father. He's not the most sane person in the world. But I was never, like, taught anything about money. But when I was, like, 18, 19, you know, you go into, like, Victoria's Secret and what do they ask you when you get rung up at the end? Like, Back oh, you want your do you want 20% off today for applying for this credit card? And when you're 19, that sounds fucking great. And at the time, I'm like, oh, I'm not even going to get approved for this, but I'm going to get 20% off this purchase. Well, I was getting approved. I got approved at Victoria's Secret, Express, just a bunch of shitty places yeah. with, like, $500 limits that I maxed out right away and then, like, never paid, never paid down. Because yeah. I was an idiot. I shouldn't have even had those, yeah. you know? And, like, I didn't have hardly any income. So I would just let those like max out and then I never did anything with them. But I feel like that's our society now. They just issue credit cards like, you know. Well, we didn't learn the lesson from 10 years ago. Well, that's so another thing. Don't no you? No one got in trouble. Don't so. you feel like it's harder to get a credit card now than it was 10 years ago? Um, for a couple of years, but not now. Not now. It's it's gearing up to do the exact same things that caused the Great Recession. Yeah. yeah so it's, A lot of that's you know, has more to do with property, but... Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, no one, no one, none of the financial institutions got in trouble for doing it. Right. So they're doing it again because why not? Yeah. They know they're going to get bailed out and they're not going to get in trouble for it. Yeah. And then so, you know, 10,000 people can kill themselves because they get foreclosed on. But hey, man. You yeah, still get yeah, a good credit, credit card. It's, it's crazy. And they just, they literally just issue credit cards yeah. to anybody. Yeah. yeah. That's how it was for me. I mean, you know, what's crazy is like now I, I can't get a credit card. You saw what happened when we tried to like, yeah. I've tried to, I, I still have that $1,500 limit capital one, one, which is the first one my dad ever gave me when I was 14 years old. Yeah, you know, I, t I have one like that. that yeah. I got to take care of still. I it's on charge off. When I, what's that I, mean? Charge off is um, they've made. <laughs> See, this is from when I was a teenager, and I did I forgot about it um, until I ran my credit not too long ago. Um, a charge off is they they get to write it off as um, almost like income, so it's like they paid you and they get the tax break, but then they can still keep it on your credit re report and still yeah. try to collect on it. But they call it a charge off. And that's really, really bad on your credit. Um, I never even heard of that. Yeah. Um, so the th they give you an IRS form that basically treats it like income, uh, so you pay taxes on it, but oh, then they shit. still try to collect. <laughs> God damn it. Motherfuckers. Yeah. And then they still try to collect on it, but it's a, after a period of seven years of no collection um, attempts or activity. They can just write it off. Yeah, um, that's the thing, too. It's but like, it still shows it up on your off. After it's still, years. yeah, and it still shows up like a charge off. Yeah. will show up for seven more years. Fuck. So that's a total of 14 years, folks, mm -hmm. for just not paying a credit card. Yeah, and yeah. I think like it's it's so easy to just not make those payments, you know? And like, but I, I feel like what I didn't realize though is I think when I was younger, to me, I was like, well, why pay? What the fuck's the point of paying like $23? When, yeah. and, and that now I say that and I think I used to be fucking insane, which I was because now in my head, I'm like, it's 23 fucking dollars to keep yourself out of collections. And it, like, it's just crazy how when I was like, you know, 1920, I just didn't care. Whereas now it's like, can't pay it soon enough. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a different ballpark now. And 
I mean, just thinking of like cost of living and such. Yeah. It's like I moved from California, got away from California because that's like three times as much as it is here. Yeah. Right. So we're settled in here. And then in how many years is this going to become like California? Right. Not that many. It's already happening. Yeah. Until we are all living in the middle of America and Idaho, (laughs) Wyoming or somewhere, because that's the cheapest place to live. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, there's a... Um, it's cool that we're in a like a slowly dying society because no one's willing to address this stuff. Yeah, and, you know, it's like e- it's easy to be gener- the generational thing and be like, oh, it's millennials; they're responsible. <laughs> no, we, we have to pay more for school. We have more debt, yeah. generally speaking, and then we none of us own property. Yeah, and so every month, I've I've never in my life put towards savings or any of my debt, the amount I have to pay for like rent. Right. Yeah. Because, like, because I am in the, un, in the unfortunate position of needing a place to live. Right. right. So, right. Yeah. Needing shelter. So, um, it's like, okay, well, how long do you think this is going to last? Yeah. Until something catastrophic happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I I think the other thing, too, I read a statistic the other day talking about, like, I I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a statistic of how many adults don't have any money in their savings account. And it was, like, over 50%. Yeah, if you you go to the bank right now and pull out $400, then you have more money than um, more than half of the country. Um, That's what I was just going to Google, statistics. I don't think a lot of people realize, like, um, the disparity. I mean, I can talk politics all day. No one likes that. But you don't realize, like, how even, like, any of us realize how poor, like, poor people are. Oh, yeah. And it's they're as poor as those few people are on the other end rich. This is crazy. 42% of American workers live paycheck to paycheck including 25% of those earning more than $100,000 a year. Cost of living. Mm-hmm. That's like completely insane to me. 29% of American workers have less than $1,000 in savings. Half have less than one in month's income saved. That's fucking so crazy to me. So like getting m- millennials have a saving rate of negative 2% thanks to things like student loan debt and rent rent prices. Yeah. You can charge as much as you want for college and charge as much as you want for rent and then say oh it's the market and it's like okay well like um i'm moving out of my place and all the rent that i'm looking at is going to be a lot more than i'm paying now but it's like oh that doesn't mean i get a raise it just means like oh okay um shit that's less money going towards whatever things that matter yeah and, and that's this um, is really crazy even my facts. like super conservative parents are starting to like realize it because uh when i do talk about things with them they kind of i, I don't think they kind of really realize it and it's just like it's not people mooching off the system it's just like how long do you like how dare baby boomers call our generation selfish and entitled they got <laughs> They had their parents coming out of World War II build, saying, I never want them to go through the Great Depression, right. another world war. Yeah. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to invest in them. And then they've grown up and they're like, well, like, that costs money, so I'm not going to do it for yeah. future generations, for, yeah, for, generations. for Gen X, for millennials. Yeah. yeah. It's so silly. I mean, look at how many married couples have roommates. Or yeah. live with other married couples, or live with their parents. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the moochers that don't work or no, anything, but they are productive. But that's because that's all they can if, afford. If you're still is to if, live with other people, if you're still using that whole like you're lazy and you're a moocher line, you just have no concept of reality anymore. That's, yeah, like that's let's, the bottom line. Let's be real, there are a lot of those, but yeah, yeah. but there's a lot of hardworking people that. Yeah, I know people who work full time jobs and live at home. Yeah, like the whole, like, oh, drive for Uber because you need a side hustle to, like, basically afford life. And it's just like, you so you're admitting that, like, you're yeah. saying you need to work two jobs. And that's, if you work two jobs, 
and you're still struggling, does that still mean you're lazy? Like, what is no. that? No, yeah. It's like you're supposed to be able to work a full-time job and be able to live. Yeah. It's I funny. <laughs> um, more, for more fun statistics, approximately 10 million U.S. households have no bank account at all whatsoever. How's that even possible? Uh, that's, you know, you know who didn't have a bank account the whole time I knew him? Dave Driscoll. No bank account. <laughs> well, I mean, we just got back from, we just got back from Tennessee, man. You go outside the city. Yeah, fucking crazy, man. Um, I guess you just go to like a check cashing place and then mm-hmm. give the landlord cash. So yep. when I, when I worked at casinos when I was younger, um, there was a, you could not, there was no direct deposit. And then you could cash your checks at the casino. I remember so, when direct deposit was it started. It was yeah. like so newfangled. I yeah. didn't really trust it. Yeah, we used to have there was but there was people I worked with who didn't have bank accounts, so they would have to go. They paid for everything cash, which I guess then you know you know what I mean. I feel like because I know for me spending cash is a lot harder than spending on a card because a card's just like swipe swipe swipe, yeah. where like with cash it's it's not the same. So that's another. Th- I used to do that too. I used to pull out. $150 a week out of the ATM and I would leave my debit card at home and like my $150 a week was my spending money and that was it. And then for what I did for a long time, well, with my savings account, while well, we're on the subject of savings account, basically when we moved to New York and I actually started making like money, I put 10% of every single paycheck into savings. And that's how I was able to like afford the gym. Mm-hmm. I put it in, I put, yeah, 10% into my savings Every single time I was paid for anything, no matter what it was, whether it was like seminars or like a sponsor, anything, anytime money came in, 10% of it went into savings, like no questions asked. And I didn't fucking touch it. And I saved up a quarter million dollars yeah. <laughs> over the course of like maybe two, you know, two years. Now, granted, I don't, I don't, I was making a lot more money then than I am now because now I have employees and you know what I mean? Things yeah. are just different. There was no overhead before when like I was relying off of eBooks and seminars. That was a hundred percent profit. And, you know, Rye Face and I would, you know, do the ebooks or do the seminars and stuff, but there was no, like, overhead, unlike donuts and deadlifts in a gym where we're paying rent and paying employees and shit like that. Right. You know, for two years, every dime I made was, like, pure profit, and that's what allowed me to save. I know most people don't, you know, have that option, but even 10%, even if some, if you have a $130 check come in, put $13 in the savings, it adds up over the course of time. Because you put $13 into your savings 10 times over the course of a month. It's 130 bucks. So yeah. that was the first thing I did that really helped me with money and savings and all that. <clears throat> and then I didn't start investing until this year. And that's been interesting. It's hard to like not pull that money out. Mm. And I just have to watch it mature. And it's like, it's slow, but I can always see it maturing. And so I use the Acorns app for that. And then what Acorns does is it, because you do the change roundup thing, right? Um, I switch from digit to capital, okay. um, which they basically function the same way. Um, mm. di- digital or digit started, um, doing like a monthly service fee and I was like, no, fuck you. And switched, um, capital mm. does pretty much the same thing. If, um, you can set it to around up to like $5 every time you use your card. Oh wow. Um, That's impressive. Or they have different methods. Like, um, I just have it saving, um, passively saving 25 a week dollars. Yeah. So just, so just pull it aside. And then I have it, um, that's addition to whenever I use my card, it pulls out a dollar. So does it, so with that one, that's an app, right? Mm -hmm. And it saves it in the app for you type thing, or does it automatically put it into your savings? Um, it saves it in the app, which I like better because then there's less temptation to. Right. That's how, that's how Acorn is for me too. So with Acorn, it rounds up to the nearest dollar, every single purchase. So whether it's, you know, 95 cents or 13 cents, every purchase I make, it rounds up to the nearest dollar and then it, 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 but mine invests it. Does yours invest it? Mm -mm. So I have mine set up to invest. And so you can with capital, but, and then you just need to choose how, you know, your, what type of, um, portfolio you want and all that. And then I set mine up to also automatically on the first of the month deposit $200 in. So instead of weekly, like you, I just, I set, and you can pick and choose that. You can set it for $5. You can set it for a thousand dollars, however you want to do it. So for me, it auto goes into, into my investment portfolio and also rounds up. So it ends up being like, just depending on how much I'm spending and using my card, um, it's anywhere from like $300 a month. I'm investing to six. There was one month I invested 600. 
So then what it does is it over each month it invests it and then you can open the app and see your investment portfolio and you can see how much you've invested, how much has come from, they call it roundups when it rounds the nearest dollar. And then you can see um, how much money you've gained or, you know, you can look at it from like, have I lost day. any money yet? Uh-uh. I think they do it into a money market fund. To, yeah. It, it tells um, you how it's done. Yeah. You, you don't want, they don't want people that don't quite get that to you can pick your level yeah, of, yeah. Uh, aggressive aggressive yeah. aggressiveness i think i have mine on moderately aggressive i raised it i had mine at moderate and then i raised it never since i raised an it investment officer who does everything for me and that way i know he's making me as much money as possible because he the more money pushy. i make the more money he makes so right here it shows me that when i am 38 years old if i keep investing 290 a month and keep on this portfolio track that I'm on, my investment portfolio will be worth about $50,000, which means I would have made $15,000. So it's really interesting. So that's something I just started doing this year. And then, I mean, Chloe uses an actual Person. human being, but also Chloe invested like a very, very large lump sum of money, whereas I'm kind of doing the, the slowly monthly thing. So again, I mean, I think investing's I think it's very adult. And I could take all of that money and pay off my credit, but I've chosen not to. I've taken part of it, but for me, I would learn zero lesson. Yeah. <laughs> zero lesson mm -hmm. if I just did that, which some people might suggest is a smarter thing, but for right. me, this is easy. This is better for me mentally because I learn what it is like to right. have to bring it back down so that I don't bring it back up again. And, I mean... I need a new car. I've needed a new car for probably a year. Yeah, since you I've, moved here. I've really needed one for like the last two months, but like I just hate debt. I'm like putting it off to the very, 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 very last minute. I just hate debt. It's like the worst thing in the world to me. See, I don't, it's, it doesn't bother me that much. Oh God, it makes me feel like I have a cement block tied to my ankles. That's I'm how just I feel. Trying to pull it through the water. I guess it surprising. depends what type of debt it is. Like car debt, you actually have a car to show for that debt. So I feel like that's one thing. But I don't know, credit card debt. <laughs> like what do most people put on their credit cards? Like people I'm, I'm, who don't have a shopping problem, like what gas and fucking groceries and shit. Like I mean, most there was a time when I was putting groceries on my credit card. Like there's I feel like most people who have credit card debt have absolutely nothing to show for it. Like I, most yeah. people I know, who, with maybe the exception of Kelsey, Kelsey's one of those people. She like has a credit card and it's used for large, large purchases and emergencies only. Like she put her eight hundred dollar nutrition certification on it. So like Kelsey's, I'm just gonna say this, Kelsey, I love you to death. You're one of the cheapest people I know. Oh, God. But, <laughs> she but is. the thing about Kelsey though is like her parents really ingrained in her to not spend. And Kelsey is a saver. She saves every penny. Kelsey's the person that buys the least expensive version of everything. Mm -hmm. And that she's okay with that. That's just how some people are. Like, you know, generic brand everything. Kelsey doesn't isn't a shopper, nothing like that. Um, Kelsey also gets, like, really stressed over money a lot, which I think a lot of people do. But, again, that's coming from her upbringing. upbringing. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how her parents raised her to be. And Kelsey's really responsible with money. Like, really responsible. And she probably has fucking shitload of money in her savings account. She probably account. got, like, 200000 <laughs> She probably has two hundred grand in her savings account. You know? And it's, it, like, it's just funny how, like, my upbringing with a father who was essentially completely careless with money, um, it shows. And I feel like it shows with Kelsey, too. You know? She had, she had parents bring her up, mm -hmm. and they taught her to be frugal and to, to save and don't buy anything unless you need it. And Kelsey has really good credit and she's responsible with money and she probably has a shitload of money in her savings account. And, you know, like that, it, it, a lot of it comes from upbringing. That's another thing to think about too, is like, it's really hard to change habits, especially like financial and spending habits. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, you saw how I feel. I feel like before I met Ben, I, I noticed with me when I'm not happy, I shop more. Cause almost like, it's like filling a void. And Chloe can attest to this, before I met Ben, how much money am I spending on just going Oh my god, we have like 20 Amazon packages a week showing up at the house yeah. and just stuff I, upon stuff upon I'd stuff. I'd go to REI and just spend like $1,500 on just stuff. Like, that we might need. That we might need, but most of it was just shit, like extra fucking shit for backpacking that we didn't really need, but it was like, and I don't know, it's weird. Like when I'm less happy, I feel like I spend more 
to like fill a void almost or try well, to. Well, I mean, I think that's a deeper symptom of your alcoholism. Yeah, that comes down to being an addict, you yeah. know. But um, again, like recently, but mostly since like Ben came into my life, I've just noticed that when I want to buy something, I wait. Remember, it used to not be that way. Now I wait. Chloe's a waiter. Mm. Chloe sees something she wants. She doesn't buy it right away. She, you know, what do you wait, like a week or two, depending yeah, on what it is? Sometimes the desire sticks around, sometimes it falls off. So then if it sticks around, then I go buy it. If it fell off, then it's I know like it's really the need it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I try to wait. Yeah. And that, you know, that impulsive buy, buy, buy right now type of behavior, you know, nothing good ever comes from it. So, I mean, another, th like with shopping and stuff, for the other thing is like, um, I tweeted about this yesterday and it got like 500 retweets. I mentioned like being a consumer and like being aware of who you're buying from too. And like just, just mindful purchasing practices as a consumer, you know, the companies you're buying from. Do the, are those companies like do-gooders or are they kind of oh. shitty and stuff like that and just making sure your money is always going to a good place. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, the, the savings thing, the, the best thing, the best advice I can offer is save 10% of everything and then even better, open like a savings account at like a credit union so you can't even touch the money because my all my savings is in chase and i can open my app and my savings is right there in front of me linked to my yeah. checking and i can be irresponsible whereas like if you go to a credit union it's open a pain in the butt what credit union yeah, to, get money, you... to get money back oh yeah because you can't just transfer it over yeah. from one account to yeah. the other yeah so that's another thing too is opening up a bank account where like you don't have a debit card linked to everything or an app to transfer funds whenever you want so if you're one of those people that like you're good about saving until you want to take the money out of savings go open a just a savings account somewhere else that you don't have a card for to access it make yeah. it hard that's like the whole freezing your credit cards thing <laughs> Yeah, some people need it. But yeah, the 10% the into your savings account, um, investing. If you want to start investing, I, I love the Acorn app. That's a great place to start, and it's easy, and you're in control of it, and it's, you're not giving a huge lump sum to somebody else to manage your money, and you can watch your money mature, and it's actually kind of taught me about investing too, seeing how it works. Um, and then what else did we talk about? Def stuff in default and collections. Yeah. If you are in collections for anything, just call and try to settle it. I mean, they'll go back and forth with you. Call and... And they have to accept a payment plan. Yeah, they have to. If you say, I can only afford to $20 a month right now, they have to take that. Yeah. So do that. Do something to be active on paying that debt down. But the other issue with collections is that if you're actively making payments on something in collections it's not going to improve your credit because you're still in collections right don't you have to actually mm. pay something in collections off I'm in order sure. for it to reflect on your I'm not sure on that yeah because once you're in collections you're fucked and you're in collections and you you know you're yeah, there but not but what i'm saying is not everyone can afford to make a $700 right. settlement payment yeah so you if you pay something is better than they'll, doing nothing. They'll go for the lump sum, um, even if it's less, usually if it's a significant amount, because it's less risk for to, them and they, get a pay, and they get a payoff, but they, they'll go for, they'll they'll hound you for as much as possible. And then you just say, okay, all right, never mind. I'll, and if they try to pressure you, just be like, no, I can't do it. And then if they hound you, just be like, all right, well, then never mind. But yeah. make, and then sure, they'll be like, whoa, 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 make sure to get everything in writing. They're gonna try and tell you that you that you can just make the payment. Actually, request that they send you an invoice first for what the agreement is, yeah. and then pay it because yeah. without any written proof, nothing's finalized verbally, and you can't get effed in the butthole <laughs> from that. There she is. <laughs> but yeah, this the stuff with collections. I mean, once you're in collections, you're kind of fucked, but. If you're not in collections, make the minimum payments. I mean, you can even make a fucking $2 payment. I learned that the other day when I was, I had to pay my MRI and I called the other day and she said, you know, she said to me, she's like, as long as you're paying something, we can't put you into collections. She's like, you could give us $1. Yeah. So that's another thing to think about is if you have. If you're not in collections if yet. If you're not in collections yet. Make a payment. Anything. Make, if you make a dollar payment, 
they have to wait at least another 30 days from then before they can even send you another letter threatening to take you to collections. And so I made the mistake the day. I was like, yeah, I'll just pay down $600. When she was like, yeah, you could have just given us a dollar. I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a credit score fiend, though, like, because I don't like it going down. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, like, calculated with what I want to do with getting a car or anything. Like, even if I want to consolidate my credit now, which is an option I could consol I could take it from, or not consolidate, transfer it to a lower interest credit card where they offer like 0% interest for 18 months, which I could do that, but do your homework because the minute you apply for another credit card, that is going to be a nick in your credit score and right. it's going to lower it. Yep. So with me getting a new car is I've already contacted my current credit union. Mm -hmm. And what I have to do is go find out exactly how much I'm going to need for that car right. before I have them check and see what loan I'm available for mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that all the ducks are lined up. So I, okay, I need 35. This is what I need. Are you going to be able to give that to me? Right. So I don't have to go to three different banks. Well, that's what happened, happened to me. To you, I got fucked. And then you're knocked down three yeah. different times. Your right. score comes down 30 points. That's a good point. So yeah, basically a hard credit check as opposed to a soft yeah. credit check. So in February... I like it hard. <laughs> I don't like anything soft. Well, that's what it affects No school. soft anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Ben and I, we bought Ben a truck in February and my credit got dinged. It went down like 25 points because they the car place had to call three different banks for the loan. And so each one of those banks individually ran a hard credit check on me and Ben. So both of our credit got fucked because then when I bought my new car a couple months ago... Um, again, they, she saw on there, but she could see that. That was the nice thing about the right. credit union is when I went to the credit, cause basically I went to Range Rover and I was like, I need to train my car and for a new car. Was, my old car was like on its last leg. And then again, what happened was is Range Rover called my bank who my current loan was already through. And they said no, cause of the price of the car. <laughs> yeah. So they turned me down. So that was a hard credit check. So then I went to the credit union with the MSRP paper and everything I needed I said, this is the car I want to buy. Like, what do we need to do to get me this car? So instead of the car dealership calling every bank who was all going to run a hard credit check on me, like you said, went to the credit union and said, this is exactly what I need. And they made it work from their end, which ended up, you know, saving me a little bit. Right. When in retrospect, I wish I would have just done that in the first place. Right. And you have to remember too, guys, do your homework first. Yeah. Because going through the car dealership, you're more likely to get a higher interest car loan than if you seek out the loan first yeah, and they're then not making go get the that car. much off the car. They're mm -hmm. making that much off the, uh, the yeah. loans, the interest and all that. And I already know that I'm pre-approved for a low finance loan through the credit union. Right. So that's why I'm just being a little bit slower with it, taking my time. Cause I already know that that's on the table. Mm -hmm. So, but just do your homework. Mm hmm. Don't rush into anything. Don't rush into things like we did when we were in our early 20s. Yeah. Just keep in mind, anytime 20s. you try to buy anything with a loan, um, <sighs> it's going to ding your credit. Mm. Ding, so, ding, ding. Yeah. Ding dong. Credit's fucking weird, man. Yeah, it's weird that when you get it checked, it lowers it. Yeah, like, I don't what? understand that, but... Uh, oh, credit, credit apps, though. Uh, the Mint app tells you your credit <sighs> in very it. detail, and... I tweeted about Mint, too. I got everybody on the Mint train. And But remember, there can be a discrepancy in your credit. Yeah, like, three. Beca yeah, because there's three different There's three. There's TransUnion and agencies. Experian. Experian, TransUnion, and uh, one more starts with an I. But I do know that, for me, they're all high, but there is, like, a 15-point discrepancy. Yeah, mine has 20 the points. So. The, my Mint credit score is 20 points higher than what Chase says it is. Which is cray. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, Chase uses a different one than my credit union uses. Chase uses TransUnion. And my credit union one uses one that is higher. It's yeah. the same one that Mint uses. Yes. So Mint's cool. Mint's a, a budgeting app that I started using a couple of years ago, and then I got Ben using it, and then I got Chloe using it, and Kelsey and everything. So what you can do is Mint links to your bank accounts, then you go and you set budgets for yourself. And what Mint does is it tracks your income versus how much you spent, and it gives you just 
every statistic you could imagine. I mean, I go in and I put in how much a month I want to spend on gasoline, how much a month I want to spend on groceries, how much a month I'm going to spend on coffee. And like, have you, and it's cool because it breaks all that down for you. It's, it's, it's an app that was developed by QuickBooks. So side note, if you are a personal trainer, anybody that's getting a 1099 and you have to submit all your receipts or, and stuff for your taxes I mean, is great to use mm-hmm. because it, you can Itemizes. categorize everything in there. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the year, you have those reports. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to save your receipts, right. basically. But what, the other thing that's been cool about Mint, too, is I kind of at first use it as like an eye opener to see where my money was going before I used it for budgeting. And like Mint, when it told me I was spending like $200 a month on coffee at coffee shops, I was like, holy shit. And so in the app, I created a $100 a month budget so that I have $100 a month to spend on coffee because I've been trying to, you know, cut coffee down. Yeah. I maybe go get coffee like every other day, every third day now. And what the app does is as I get close to that budget, it alerts me and says, hey, you're approaching your coffee budget for the month or your groceries or your gasoline or your spending money. You can even go in there and put, you know, spending money. You can put what you want to spend on clothes each month. Yeah. I mean, y- you can break it down as far down as you want. You can break it down to like how much money you want to spend eating out a month, everything like that. So that's been really helpful, too, because you can create those budgets based around, you know, saving 10 percent of your income. I think you can even go as far as to put all that in there as well. Mm -hmm. You can put how much you want to save a month and how much you want to go into savings. So and then it also gives you all your info on your credit within the app. So that's really cool, too. So that app's been a huge help for everybody around here. What else can you think of? Can you think of anything else? Nope. Yeah, this was kind of a boring one, but I told people I would do it. Um, but ba- I mean, if I was able to get my credit from 420 or whatever it was, I mean, I had two people tell me I had the lowest credit they'd ever seen. <laughs> and I was kind of like, dang, man. And like one of those people was when I was, I went into Chase in New York City to uh, try to get a credit card. And I sat down and this was before I, I opened the gym. So I think I had like 190,000 bucks in my savings account probably like 40 in my checking like this is when I was making fuck you money and um I sat down and the lady opened my accounts and she's like yeah this shouldn't be an issue at all you know she's like you could probably what's the big chase one the sapphire yeah she was like you can probably get approved for the chase sapphire like she looked at my income and looked at you know how much was coming in a month and then she denied me and she was like how is your credit so bad she's like you have the worst credit I've ever seen and she looked through and I like explained it to her she's like we can't give you a credit card I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, you're just too high risk despite how much money you're making now. Yeah. So that was like a kind of a big eye opener. But she like she didn't offer any help. So I didn't even know what I was in debt to. I was I had just paid off my student loans, but I had debt to like a couple of those shitty Express <laughs> Victoria's Secret credit cards that were, you know, way in collections. And then like a couple credit cards, a couple like medical bills, enterprise rent a car. I owed them like twenty five hundred bucks. Yeah just like a bunch of shit and what it took is going to a credit union getting all my in in detail completely printed out so I had a list and I just started making phone calls and that's it sucks and it's humiliating and you make these calls and these the way the people talk to you on the other end of the phone like you're the most irresponsible idiot of all time and like it's not fun and I you know I had I've emptied my savings account twice paying debt off now but like now the only debt I have is my two car payments and that's it yeah and that's it and my credit's gone up almost 100 points in a year just because I actually took the time to work on it. And I, you know, took the money out of savings, which is kind of what it's for. And now my credit's almost 650, which isn't great, but it's better than 420. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I know I'm never going to be able to buy a house until I get it to the 700. So that is next goal. Yeah, it won't be long. Right. All right. Well, kind of boring, but I told you guys that I would do this. So hopefully it was helpful to some of you. Thanks for Ryan and Chloe to chiming in. Toodaloo. Toodaloo, guys. Go buy coffee and protein. Use the code BLACKIRON. Okay, bye.